Hello and welcome to another episode of By the Horns. Today I'm joined by Matt Quinnen, founder and CEO of Crew for a Cause. Crew for a Cause is a charity that finds talented and deserving youngsters from underprivileged backgrounds and provides them scholarships to complete top quality high school education in South Africa. I chatted to Matt about how the charity functions, how they select the kids for the scholarships, and what all of this has to do with Bitcoin. The charity has been growing from strength to strength, and they have recently adopted a Bitcoin's donation strategy to grow their donor base and to potentially provide incentives for the kids to perform in their educational journey. Proof for a Cause is a refreshing model for how I believe charities should function in the real world. But before we get into this episode, here's a word from our sponsor, Bitcoin. Have you ever tried to import a hardware wallet into South Africa? If you have, then you know it's a slow and expensive process with many hidden costs and risks, like the post office losing a package. Well, I'd like to tell you about my new company, Bitcoin Only. Bitcoin Only is your one-stop shop for all high-quality Bitcoin hardware wallets in South Africa. We stock Blockstream Jades, cold cards, seed signers, and more. We also offer Bitcoin consultations if you need any advice on your self-custody solution, or would like to set up a Bitcoin will so that your family can get hold of your Bitcoin if something unexpected happens to you. Head over to bitcoinonly.io and apply the code BTC at checkout to get a discount on your next purchase. That's bitcoinonly.io, Bitcoin for the sovereign individual. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of By the Horns, a Bitcoin podcast about South Africa. And today I am joined by Matthew Quinning. Matthew is the founder and CEO of Crew for a Cause. Crew for a Cause is a charity that finds deserving youngsters and puts them through school to get them a great education and give them a leg up in life. Matthew, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks so much, Ricky. It's an honor to be on here. Lekker, man. Good to have you. I see you yeah. dressed up for the occasion. I feel a bit underdressed. I did. Today. I did. You know, you got to look important. <laughs> no, very true. Very true. So, Matt, uh, yeah, tell, me, tell us, before we dive into what crew for a cause is, do you mind telling us mm. a bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, so, I'll go back all the way to, you know, right, right in the beginning. I was born in Hart Bay, grew up there. My mom and dad went to Crindendale Primary, um, had a really great upbringing, went to Wine Big Boys. Then had the opportunity to go get my undergrad at um, Stellenbosch University, did entrepreneurial management there, and then <laughs> yeah, I came back. Oh, I've got a surname as Kuning, but it's actually Dutch, and I'm, my my Afrikaans is not very good. So, needless to say, that my nickname was actually Queen <laughs> when I was at Stellenbosch. So, <laughs> yeah, um, and then yeah, and then it was uh, privileged enough to do my postgrad at uh, UCT. Um, and yeah, and it's really there that I kind of kicked off my uh, working career. I run, uh, currently run a, a business where we use digital rewards to drive customer behaviors. So very much in the loyalty and reward space and, and advertising space. And I've been here for the last 14 years. So yeah, that's just a little bit about me. And um, yeah, and this is kind of the charity just became a real passion project and, and something that myself and, and a bunch of our friends really wanted to give back to this amazing country. Yeah, so so crew for a cause is the charity, right? Um, yeah, and I mean I briefly highlighted it, but 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 can you, in your own ways, just tell us a bit more about the charity? Yeah, sure. So I mean, we, we we're going on into our eighth year now, and um, you know, it kind it kind of really all started where you know it started with with the education that we were given. We were privileged enough to be given a really top class education, both in high schooling and tertiary education. And, um, and it really kind of was the stepping stone to allowing us to get into the workplace and to start earning good income and to really kind of set ourselves up financially. And so, you know, once we had finished this and, and a bunch of us friends were, you know, were working and earning good incomes, we kind of took a step back and we said, well, you know, is it not our time to start looking at how we can give back? And, um, and, a, and a big part of that was obviously this big focus on education. We believe that education is a stepping stone to a better South Africa. And, and if we can do our little bit in it, we can really start kind of um, making change within this country. And so, um, yeah, we, we, we really got initially 15 friends. We were all Weinberg boys. And uh, we pulled some money together and we ended up sponsoring one boy. His name was MK. And, um, and we kind of started sponsoring. So it was, it was an amazing story. We went and met his mom. He only has a mom. He came from the township. He was one of, I think, seven or eight who, who lived together in a small room. And uh, he had a lot of promise at Weinberg. So we kind of worked with the school and uh, we allocated a certain amount of funds to, to sponsor it. And that's kind of how it all started. 
And, um, and it was a really, really exciting thing. We, we stuck with him. We helped him. We mentored him. We helped him get extra maths lessons. And it was a very hands-on experience. And so we, look, we took a step back afterwards and we looked at this and we said, well, you know, this is really working, you know, and it's, and it's something that we're all very passionate about. How can we now take this to the next level? And so, and so really that's where Crew for a Cause was born. It was born from, from this idea of, of putting um, talented kids through high school. We, we thought that, you know, our sandbox in the, in the space of education is obviously there's, there's six different areas and they're all very important all the way from ECD, early childhood development, all the way to the to high schooling and then obviously into tertiary education. Um, but obviously we couldn't solve all of the problems with the, with, with the funding that we had and, and, the, num and the amount of, of friends that we had pulled the money. So we decided to focus on high school only. And, um, and yeah, and, and, and we, we, we looked at the model and we thought, well, okay, Let's let's see how many people we can get involved and see how many kids we we can help out, and uh, and that's really where Crew for Cause was, was was ultimately born. All right, and and so I mean the problem you guys are addressing is is obviously that in South Africa if you don't go to a, a decent quality school like it's kind of like a binary right like the 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 low quality schools are really really low quality. Um, and the good quality schools are often kind of unaffordable. Um, yeah, and so I suppose this is really, it's finding kids and getting them into those good quality schools that they otherwise wouldn't have an opportunity to get into. Um, and maybe could you, for people who don't really understand and, and specifically foreigners, I guess, like what does the schooling landscape in South Africa look like and why is it just such a bad thing to end up going to, to a, a lower quality school? Yeah, you, you know, I, th I think, you know, there's lots of problems with low quality schools, but but I think a big um, issue that, that South Africa faces at the moment is just lack of quality teachers um, and, and paid teachers and, and qualified teachers and, and teachers that have the, the ability to teach correctly. And so I think the ability for a kid, an underprivileged kid who has a lot of talent in the education space to go to a more privileged school allows them to get better teaching, which allows them to get better marks, which allows them to go further in, in, in the education landscape. And I think, you know, that for us is, is, is a very big concept of, of crew for a cause. So, you know, there are endless number of kids that, that need funding in the education space and particularly in high schooling. So, you know, a big part of what of what we do, and um, this is all a part time kind of project that myself and, and one or two others are involved in, is, is we've ended up partnering with another organization that does a lot of our vetting on on finding talented kids. And I think it's very important. I think if we're going to make proper change in this country at the moment in the education space is we need to be focusing on the kids that have a lot of talent. And so um, we've partnered with another organization called the Spirit Foundation, and they do a lot of our vetting of the kids and they give us a whole bunch of list of, of potential candidates that we can then choose and select and um it's quite an interesting process that they follow they they do psychometric testing with the kids when they're 12 years old there's thousands and thousands of applicants that they whittle that down and there's a select number that they do psychometric testing with and they they do this on maths science english and grit and grit is always the one that everyone asks, what does grit mean? And I think, but it's one of the most important is because ultimately, if you're going to be funding a kid coming from one school and putting them in a, in, in a different school and a different environment, culturally, different people, et cetera, et cetera, lots of different reasons, they need to be able to handle and they need to be able to adapt to that new environment. And I think that's, that, that's a very important skill set to have. And that's part of why we use grit as, as one of our metrics to determine the right candidates for, for us to sponsor. So, yeah, you know, and, and I think, you know, a big, a big part of it is then, uh, sorry, I, you haven't asked the question, but, I, but I'll share it with you anyway. We, we currently um, uh, have partnered with seven schools in the Western Cape and, uh, we, and one school in Joburg. Uh, the Joburg school was just so that we can start positioning ourselves as a, nas as a national charity. But um, the schools that we partnered with in, in the Western Cape are the likes of Weinberg Boys, Weinberg Girls, Norman Henshawwind, Claremont High, Bergfleet High. So very, very prominent high schools in, in the Western Cape. And, um, and, and we have great relationships with all of them. And, and the, the beauty of, of the process of these kids is they're all part of this community outside of their own individual schools. And that's something that we, we take them for camps in partnership with the Spirit Foundation so that they can start interacting with other uh, kids uh, that come through the, through the organization. 
Um, and then just kind of see how the other schoolings are. You, you get an idea of what they want to do. Obviously, when you start hitting high school, you know, a big, big question that people start asking is, what do you want to do afterwards? So, you know, the, the, the camps are type of really nice space to, to start getting the kids to you know, work with each other and figure out what it is that they want to do. So, so are you fine? What age are you guys selecting these kids um, to join the to join the program, and, and when do they become eligible? Is it from from end of high school, or where? How do you guys do your filtering? Program? Yeah, so the, it's the beginning of high school. So from twelve years old, they would apply, and then they go into the high school um, curriculum, which is obviously from the age of thirteen to eighteen. I'm, I'm old school, yep. so it was standards for me, but I believe it's yep. grades now. So, uh, so I think it's grade <laughs> grade six to um, grade to, or grade twelve. I think it is. Um, and that's great, the period. Great, that, great eight, great eight to grade twelve, Valley. Great eight to grade twelve. <laughs> Thank you. So you can see how old I am. <laughs> Standards. Um, <laughs> so, um, so the kids, uh, grade grade seven, they the standard five, the grade seven marks that kind of really and, and earlier that really apply for when they are getting selected to go into this program. Yeah, correct. So like that, 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 that's school. kind of when we look at them. That's that's the latest reporting that we can kind of analyze and look at and see, okay, well, these kids have potential. Um, currently, we, we, we're only sponsoring kids with an 80% average and above across the board. Um, some are more skewed to certain certain different subjects, um, but we, we tend to try and take a range. But I think, you know, most importantly is all of these kids come from underprivileged areas that need financial support, um, but have a lot of talent um, in terms of we think that they can go far with it within the in the education space and ultimately start getting jobs and in our long term vision we, we MK was the first kid that that left high school and that was a couple of years ago we've just had a new batch that, that left and a new batch that will be writing matrix coming uh, writing writing ex uh, final exams now in November and they will then be going on into you know into tertiary space and hopefully one day you know all of them can start filtering in can start being mentors for the new kids you know, can have some sort of funding model with them that they can get involved. So, yeah, we're very excited by the future of when we start seeing the successes come through and they start getting really good jobs and, and seeing how we can filter them back into the into the charity. So you've seen a cohort, obviously, from from uh, the first kid come through. Uh, you've seen a cohort go from from grade eight all the way through to now he's, he's in tertiary. And you've seen a few cohorts now that have finished matric already and have, have gone well, another one and then the other guys in matric now that have come through. So the project's been running kind of its entire life cycle already for a few cohorts of kids. So you've seen you've seen the outcomes. Um, and what have, what have those outcomes been so far for you guys? Yeah, yeah, we have. I, I mean, uh, you know, just for clarity, we started, I think, MK, he was in grade nine um, and we started, but obviously he, he's finished matric now and then he's currently working at a, at a back-end website company in Front Shock of all places. Um, and they house him there and he works there. And um, I actually today got a write-up from him and, and he stays in contact with us. And it's a really personal relationship. Currently, we we sponsoring twenty five kids through throughout the organisation. So you know, as we grow, it's difficult to get that personal interaction with them. But I think MK has a soft spot with all of us just because he was our first. But but he's a prime example of somebody that then kind of went on and has now got a got a job, and um, and can start filtering back into the organisation. Uh, he said he messaged me the other day and he was like, "Oh, when you coming to Frontship, lunch on me." So, <laughs> which was really, <laughs> which was, which I was quite, which I was maybe very proud of. the first positive and, outcome right there. <laughs> I know. And I'm going to take him up on that in front check. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, and then, and then there are some other cases where, you, you know, we, we're going to come into some challenges. Currently, we, we have a boy, um, Kevin. Um, his, his mom and dad are from Rwanda and they came down and, and there's a whole story behind that. And if anyone's interested, I'll be more than happy to share with them privately, but they've come down and he's actually in the top 10 grade at Weinberg boys. He's an incredibly smart kid. He's number one chess player in South Africa. And he's just been accepted to, into actuarial science, into Witz, Stellenbosch and UCT. So, I mean, we're incredibly, incredibly proud of, of Kevin. There is a complication in that um, during the course of um, because his parents are obviously you know have refugee status in South Africa. Although Kevin was born in South Africa, there was a there's been some complications with home affairs in terms of um, his name being wrong on his his application for his ID, and he hasn't been able to receive an ID. And although we've already secured him funding to go to one of those universities, so the funding's been granted and given, they won't release the funding because he doesn't have a South African ID. So. You know, I think what, what I alluded to right in the beginning in terms of in terms of crew for a cause, and this kind of falls in really nicely with that, is 
a big part of our vision is to is to build a community of people in South Africa. I think there there isn't there's so many South Africans that that want to do good and particularly in the education space, but don't necessarily have a platform, a safe platform, a transparent platform, or know where to do it. And I think one of our main goals at Crew for a Cause is to build this community of people that have a safe space to contribute financially to, to an organization that is putting the money in the right places to the right kids, but also be a part of a community and feel a part of something. So, you know, I, um, I think we're going to get to our funding model, but um, it's been a prime example of, of where we're currently on about 250 uh, members within the organization where this issue with Kevin, we opened it up to the organization and um, and so many people have put their hands up and said, well, I've got I've got a connection in home affairs. I know this. I know this. And all of a sudden now we, you know, we, 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 we having conversations with these people who are part of the community that are coming forward and saying, well, I can help out. And it's incredibly powerful. And people want to feel a part of something, not just give their money and not know where it goes. And so it's a big driving force behind us, you know, within the organization is to build this number, this, this community of people, you know, currently you can sign up at the moment for as little as 50 rand a month. You would do it through the website. Very, very simple and very easy. You click donate. It's a monthly, put your credit card details in. We've also got a debit order system and you can donate, you know, like I said, as little as 50 rand a month. Our goal is to get a million South Africans as part of this community giving 50 rand a month. And we've got enough funding to really make proper change. So, um, yeah, just a, a, a really cool example of, of the power of the community. Yeah, and I think that's such a valuable point there. Like, giving someone money is, is, is great. That obviously solves a lot of problems. And giving them a good ed- education solves a lot of problems. But often people from the underprivileged background don't have the network that we take for granted. You know, if we grew up in a, in, in a you know, went to good schools and we're lucky enough to grow up in that environment, we have a network that you lean on all the time. And, it, you know, you don't, you might not think about it but it's super valuable and building having a a, a network of of concerned people who are really want the best for these kids and see these kids succeed is actually something super valuable um and you never know like who you can draw on in that community so like yeah. in the example you made now like having someone who knows someone at home affairs to help rectify <laughs> the problem there is super valuable for kevin right now yeah. Because that was just a clerical error, uh, error, clerical error that happened at uh, at Home Affairs, and it's caused like such massive downstream problems for him. Um, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, absolutely. You know, the only way at Home Affairs is to have someone on the inside who can fix things. For you. <laughs> yeah, 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 wait. yeah. No, you got to wait. No shame. We, I mean, you know, Kevin's dad contacted us, and we 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 went for a coffee with him, and he shared his last two year journey and, and what he's gone through and the lawyers he's been approaching and the money he spent and it's uh, you know and it's and this we, we were kind of his last option and we came and he sat him down and we said well let's open it to the community and and we have and and the response has been incredible people want to get involved yeah. people want to do good uh, they just don't have the space to do that and, and i think it's really a big objective for us moving forward is to how do we build this community of South Africans that get, can contribute financially. Obviously, funding is very important so we can sponsor the kids that we want to sponsor. But also, you know, how do we then grow that and the, the more the more community members we have? And, you know, who knows, maybe one day we, we build a system where community members can start benefiting from each other. If, if I need an accountant and there's an accountant part of Crew for a Cause, then, you know, there, you know there's a legitimate kind of re, uh, referral into somebody that's part of the community. So, it's a, it's a big driving force for us, and the bigger the community, obviously, the more funding we have, and the more people to get involved, the more good that we can do. Yeah, hundred percent. And and so speaking of your funding, so so you said you can start from fifty bucks a month. Um, how does the model work? Like, what does it cost to to put a kid through a year in school, and like, what does it cost to put a kid through like an entire high school education? Just so, because people might not know what that what that number is, and then how does your model work to to meet those goals? Yeah, cool. No, I mean, that's a great question. And, and the, the reality is the disparity of um, the, the, the schooling fees per annum is, is crazy. It's, it's absolutely crazy. I mean, on one end, you've got Claremont High, who's, you know, top 10 academic school in, in the Western Cape at you know between 10 and 15,000 rand per annum and then you've got you know other schools the Weinbergs the Berkeley's which are 40 50,000 per annum you know so you know it it, 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 it the disparities are quite big so you know based on 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 the amount of funding that we have we determine you know where we can potentially put the kids and and obviously you know they have a, they have a choice of where they would like to go so you know it's 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 not a dictatorship. We don't tell them where they need to go. It, it's very much a mutual decision, but but based on the funding that we have available for within that year. But um, 
you know, you know, obviously, you know, in, in, in any NPO or any charity, you know, your funding model is very important. The more funding you have, the, the, the more kids you can sponsor. So, you know, what we, we, we took a step back and we looked at it as like, well, how should we fund for this organization? And, you know, the, the most obvious one is corporate funding. You go and approach them. Um, and, but obviously there's a lot of education charities. Currently there's about 8,000 education charities in South Africa alone. And they're all fighting for the same little corporates that have these little CSI funds and, and et cetera. And, and a lot of the big guys are actually starting their own funds and they're not necessarily funding externally. So, you know, although corporate funding is important for us, it's, we didn't want to make it our primary. So, so we, we kind of took a view on this concept of, of community funding and to say, if you've got debit order systems in place and you get somebody into the, into the charity and they're giving 100 rand, 250, 300, 500 rand a month, that's far more sustainable in terms of your funding model because ultimately you're going to have them for a lifetime and you know that that income is going to be. And, and a big part of, of our growth strategy is to try and grow the number of members as part of the charity because, like I said earlier, the, the, more, the more members you have contributing financially, the more likelihood you can obviously have more money and you can do more good. So... Um, so, so, so the membership funding model is obviously a very, very important one. Um, but you know, other things, and uh, you know, in, in terms of how we, we we try and do, a big part of it has been going to deceased estates. You know, you look at all the different options of how you can do. You approach lawyers, and you approach them, and you present your charity, and you say if there's you know any deceased estates, and you're looking for organisations or charities to sponsor, use us. We recently got some funding from one in George, which was really exciting. So. Um, so, you know, again, for, for any NPO or any charitable organization, especially when your, your costs are ultimately five years because you're starting a kid in grade eight and you're finishing them in high school, you, you can't get funding for three years and then the funding drops off. So, you know, your funding needs to be sustainable because you've got this five-year commitment with a kid. So, you know, for me, it was really how do we branch out and how do we have multiple revenue streams or as many as possible in order to ensure that we've got enough funding to, to keep that going. And not only that, you know, when you're building an organization, you, there's fixed costs. There's, you know, if, you know, if we want to employ a team, we, you know, we've got to pay salaries. There's office, you know, there, there's a lot of costs around, um, you know, the charity space that people don't necessarily always, you know, always see. So our, our model at the moment is, yes, we approach corporates and yes, we approach other, you know, other revenue streams. But what we want to communicate as, as a powerful kind of message to our community members is to say that 100% of your contributions will go to the kids. So if you're giving 100 rand a month, 100 rand will go to the kids. And, um, and then the way we fund in other areas is, is how we will kind of keep the running costs of the organization go. So, so that's kind of how we, we're positioning it at, at, at the moment. We've recently brought on uh, two CAs in, uh, in, um, as our financial controllers. Um, so we put a lot of controls in place just to ensure that we are forecasting correctly, that we aren't over committing to certain costs because, you know, that's ultimately the worst thing that you can imagine. You, you start a, a kid in high school and, and you run out of funds. So we make sure that we, we're very careful yeah. with all of that. Yeah. No, like you said, that is, that's obviously a, a concern that most people would have is that you put a kid, a kid into high school, goes to a great school, and then in grade 10, he's got to be pulled out and, you know, sent to a different yeah. school. Um, yeah. That's like a... It's a terrible situation to end up with. Yeah, but I mean yeah. that doesn't happen. That hasn't happened yet with you guys, obviously. No, 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 no. It hasn't. You've, you've planned it. <laughs> yeah, no, no. It definitely hasn't. We, we've also, you know, another nice thing about the community members is obviously, you know, in the tax year, we we've got our section eighteen A um, or our PBO number, which has took me about three years and three different law firms to get. Obviously, SARS issues it, and it's not easy to. To, to get but we we've gone down that road which makes us very legit so you know you're not as a, as a charity you're not going to get even be considered in in the corporate space if you don't have that certificate but the same on an individual level if you're contributing financially we'll give you a certificate within the tax season when you need it and you submit that you know you know when you're doing your your tax and there's obviously you know financial benefits and tax savings that you get from all of that so you know we really encourage and we try to create and build the build the charity like a business so that people want to get involved because there's obviously some benefits for them financially and, and obviously from a tax perspective yeah for people who don't know that means that you can write off some of your donations to tax so instead of donating mm. the money to SARS and to the ANC you can donate it to a kid that needs to go to school yeah. which is a much yeah. better cause in my opinion yeah, yeah, exactly. And, uh, and, and I think one, one, one funding model that I didn't really touch on, which is something that you and I have worked on, is that, um, you know, this idea of, of and, and I think for me, it's constantly 
progressing the product, I think, as well. And, um, and you know, what we've recently done, thanks to you, is, is create a platform where people can contribute towards the, the charity through Bitcoin and with Bitcoin. And, um, and I think it's a really, really, really cool opportunity to get international funding to um, anyone that's in the crypto or the Bitcoin space to who wants to get involved, you know, now all of a sudden has a platform that, you know, that they can, they can um, contribute with their Bitcoin into, into the organization. And, we, and we're very stoked and very proud about that. And obviously you are a big part of that. And it's, you know, it's something about keeping the product going, making sure that there's so many streams and making it as easy as possible for people to contribute in, in whichever way they want to. Yeah, you know, that's a, it's, and that's when we, we were first discussing this idea um, to integrate Bitcoin into the charity. Like the, the, the big draw card for me on this is that you've got a bunch of people now who are, who made a lot of money off of Bitcoin and they're still holding that Bitcoin, right? They don't, they're not fiat rich. They don't have like a lot of cash in their bank account, but they've got Bitcoin that's quite valuable and they might want to do something philanthropic with that Bitcoin. Um, and now they can donate the Bitcoin directly. They don't have to convert it into, into rands and then donate the rands and incur, you know, there's a whole bunch of issues with that, but they can now donate yeah. their Bitcoin directly to this. Um, yeah. And like you say, the international funding channel becomes a lot easier now. I mean, you were, you were over in London recently doing fundraising. And if sure, you find some, some people who are interested in what you're doing, and that's great. But to send money internationally, it's, it's first off, there's massive friction. Um, any international payments coming in, you're going to pay a few hundred bucks just in processing fees to, to, to get that money in. Which means yeah. you end up losing losing cash there, um, and it's a it's a bit of a headache, you know, to maybe do an international transfer. Um, so for people sitting abroad with with Bitcoin, it just makes it makes it a you know a thirty second experience. It's just so much easier. Um, yeah. The one issue on the Bitcoin side is we haven't managed to set up a recurring model yet. That framework is being built on in Lightning, but it doesn't really exist commercially yet. It's something we'll I'll definitely roll out to you guys as soon as it's there. So awesome. it is just lump sum payments for now. Um, yeah. but having, having that recurring payment model will be super, super interesting in Bitcoin. Um, yeah, yeah, and so, yeah. So one of the things we did for you guys was, uh, we set up Bitcoin and lightning payments so people can make, you know, hundred buck, 50 buck, 500 rand, whatever they want, they can pay via lightning. So super easy, no on-chain fees, none of that. Um, and the, the other thing that's, that's really important is that we set you guys up with a self custodial solution. So that you guys are holding your own private keys. I mean, I, I, I so we set you up with a nice yeah. seed plate. So you got you yeah. got your seeds backed up on steel. There, you guys are doing it, <laughs> doing it the right way. Um, yes. You know, the, all the, all the Bitcoin is out there. You guys are holding your private keys yourself. You're not trusting me or anyone else to do Bitcoin. Um, and all the donations go directly to the to the organization, which is mm. which is great. Um, you guys hold your own Bitcoin. Yeah, and yeah. So that we're very proud of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, those kids then their 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 money is is safe in the, re in the respect that it's not being held by an exchange because these things go bankrupt all the time. And yeah, exactly. I think it like this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so no, it was your idea to even potentially, you know, start creating a tertiary fund with some of the Bitcoin to some of the kids. You know, if you, if you give a thousand rands worth of Bitcoin, maybe, you know, one rand or 50 cents goes to each of the kids that we sponsor and we start building a tertiary fund with that. And I think that's a fantastic idea. So I think, you know, the, yeah. the concept of, of going this route allows us the, you know, the opportunity to start building and furthering the product and, and thinking about the kids further on down the line as well. Yeah, so this is something that I think will really appeal to the Bitcoin community because they are long-term thinkers. And um, one of the, the ideas we bounced around was like, how about building a, a fund for each kid in Bitcoin? They have their, their own wallet that's, you know, dedicated to them, um, private keys and all. And then the, the Bitcoin that gets donated to them goes in there when they're in grade eight and they start high school. And then the contributions, you know, a small percentage goes in every month or whenever the payments are made. Um, and so there's the lump sum of Bitcoin sitting for them as a prize when they finish the trick that they can now take this as startup capital to go and spend on, you know, whatever they want to spend it on. Mm. Um, mm. Because these kids are not going to have this opportunity. You know, like a, kids that come from a privileged background, they finish school, their parents buy them their first car, you know. These kids, cool, they've got a great education, but like they, they unfortunately those those uh, options aren't there for them to have a, you know, some startup capital, whether it's to go buy a car or start your own business or whatever the case may be. Yeah. And um, taking a five year time horizon on Bitcoin for these kids and having like this incentive structure for them to like, if you hit these marks, like if you, you know, get straight A's and if you, you know, achieve whatever the, the, the criteria is that you guys set out for them, um, 
they get a they get a, 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 a their own Bitcoin wallet that's waiting for them, and they can they can look at it, you know, mm. throughout the entire high school career as yeah. you can inspect yeah. it on chain. Um, it's a strong incentive for them to, to yeah. keep performing. Yeah, because absolutely. I guess the worst case scenario for you guys is you you find some great kids, they look really promising on paper, they do well for the first few years, and then they just fall off the wagon like halfway through, you know. Because yeah, uh, yeah, there's so many factors. Yeah, it's your yeah. living conditions. It's your your ability. It's load shedding. It's there's there, there's so many different factors that can cause somebody to not necessarily perform when they even if they've got, still got the potential. So absolutely, you know, hundred percent. And 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 I think you know, just supporting what you're saying there is what, what we've also created in, in in the charity is this concept of a pod system. And um, the pod system really says is currently we, we, we sponsor 25 kids through, through high school is that if you maybe have an attraction to one of the kids or you want to get a bunch of your buddies together or you are a particular corporate that wants to do something good or you a Bitcoiner that, you know, maybe has has some extra Bitcoin or you wealthy, whatever it is, you can we can create a pod for you, which ultimately allows you to sponsor one kid only and you'll get feedback only on that kid. So, you know, when you become a, a, a member, we send newsletters out, you get these events that happen, there's, you, you become part of this community that gets communicated to on, on everything that's happening. But if you create your own pod, we'll just communicate a particular scholar or kid just to you that you're sponsoring. And so it's another really nice way, even in the Bitcoin world, if you want to allocate your Bitcoin to a kid, maybe you want to build them a tertiary education fund alone, you know, whatever there is. I think the options are there. And, and, and you know, we are very flexible and we want to position ourselves as very flexible and, and ensuring that we do continue to grow the product. So if that's something we need to build based on, you know, on the back end and things like that, then, then we must do that. So I think it's a really nice way of, of, of you know, an individual or a pod of people or a group you know, to really get involved in one scholar and kind of watch their journey throughout the throughout the process. I think that sets up the mentor, like the mentorship, lifelong mentorship kind of pathway for these kids, like really well. You mm. know, because you can just find one person who really wants to do good in the world. He, you know, he's done well. They've done well for themselves financially, and they're like, "Cool, I want to you know pass it on." They might have a lot of experience and skills to pass on, and they can act as mentors for these kids, which is which is phenomenal. And this is how like this can work like you can actually like see their report card at the end of each term it comes back and you take like an active interest and it's not just i'm funding some kid to go to school it's like i'm funding like kevin to go to school yeah and like yeah. i'm concerned about kevin as a person and how he's doing and like it just doesn't end when he finishes high school right like it's like a it's more of a mentorship thing which i think is is awesome and that's the, what i really like about crew for a cause like the personal touch you guys put into this it's not just mm -hmm. another faceless npo um, yeah, you know, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very cool what you guys are doing. <laughs> yeah, thank you. thank you. It's obviously very time consuming, you know, the personal touch. Um, but and a, and a big part of us and, and our growth strategy at the moment is is to look at our website. So, you know, we're looking for funding for our website. There's a, there's a lot we want to do. You know, there's lots of other different ways that you can help. You know, potentially we're looking at building a geographical map of all the local schools probably first focus on the Western Cape and going to them and finding out from them, you know, what do you need? We don't sponsor a kid through your school. It's an underprivileged school. But uh, what, you know, what do you need? And if it's school books, then create a geographical map on the website that somebody could click on. This school in this area is looking for these books and you can then get involved yourself and kind of go and deliver books and you or we'll build a, a process that is through us. So, you know, I, I think at the moment we, we are looking for funding to really build a, a slick and an amazing website potentially even as we grow as a community members to build in loyalty points, you know, so the more you contribute financially, the more points you get, the more benefits you can get. And, and as, as I said in the beginning, that's kind of the space that I come out of. So, you know, there's, there's always those opportunities. So, you know, I think it's very, very important that we continue to grow the product as, as the charity, but don't lose that idea and the identity of the personal touch and really feeling like you're involved in this kid. And, and mentorship is a big, big topic of conversation for us is how do we get people that want to mentor kids to get involved? And particularly even after the high school period, probably when it's more important to be mentoring them, you know, when they're living on their own, they maybe moved out of home, they're in university, they don't have as much structure as the high school link system, you know, so, um, you know, I, I think, you know, for the members that want to get involved, this personal touch is a, is a very good uh, selling point to people. Yeah. And and the other thing I want to chat about is just the community you guys have built of people around this charity. Like, there's obviously you guys have events um, where everyone gets together, and it's like I've I've 
been involved in many organizations in my life and, and I've seen many kind of charities in my life, but this is quite something special that you guys have managed to build. Like it really is crew for a cause. Like it's a, it's a tribe of people that are, that are emerging, which is very cool. And like, how have you guys cultivated that and built that, that community spirit? Yeah, I, I think you touched on events. I think events are a very important way of doing that and, and just constantly communicating. I think, as you know, and you've been to, to the first two, we, we've started this concept of uh, monthly member meetings. And uh, we're choosing every first Tuesday of the, of the month. We might change that to a Wednesday when people are not so hungover still from the weekend. But, um, <laughs> but you know, and I think, I think the, the aim of them is just to share the fact that there's a lot that's happening behind the scenes that people don't necessarily see. So, you know, because we want to be a charity that's very transparent, we want to constantly share. So once a month, come to a meeting, we'll share what's going on behind the scenes. And then a part of that is we asking community members to, to one, we, we choose a business topic and somebody chooses on a business topic. Last month, we had this concept and, the, and the, the, the concept of time in the workplace and in life. And it was, you were there, it was a really, really brilliant speech. And, and then, and then the second one is more something more fun. So maybe somebody's done a really cool adventure. Uh, we had a mate who was a game ranger for two years. So he kind of spoke on his five tips, what to do if you want to become a game ranger, which nobody would have ever known that. And I think it was really cool. So, you know, it, you know, big part of this community is, you know, if we want to do good, we've got to have fun at the same time. And so, you know, how we've cultivated that is through this concept of we can still have fun and do good and we can still join forces and we can still have these events that we have a lot of fun while doing good at the same time. And, um, and I think that really is the driving spirit, you know, through the organization. You know, people want to be a part of something, but they also want to, they want to have fun. You know, the world's a very serious yeah. place at the moment. And I, I think it is important yeah. that we, we have this concept of, of fun coming through, through the organization. And, and, the, and, the, and the events have been amazing. You know, we do an auction. We do um, uh, quiz nights. We do, there's a load, a bunch of different um, events that we like to do. And, uh, and then people start mingling amongst different community members and, you know, kind of there's growth there as well. It's really our big strategy yeah. on how we, we try and grow new members. Obviously, it's very time consuming and we need people to get involved and we're looking to grow significantly at the moment. But, um, you know, I think, you know, once you've come to an event, you can really start to see the benefit of what we do and the personal touch. And you can see that people are really yeah. doing this because they want to do it and they're passionate about it. Yeah. I mean, the charity event is the charity auction is the is the events of the year on the social calendar. That, yeah. uh, I've, been to the last, I've been to the last two they are they're you really dj are that's the last one i think infectious yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's it's infectious though you know like um it, it, because it's a it's an auction your people get excited um mm. and next minute you're raising a couple of hundred grand for for to put kids to the school you know like it really is a very cool yeah. thing to see um yeah. and uh the other thing is just the, the the business network that forms around us of people that you wouldn't have met otherwise so for example um the venue that you guys have the, the monthly meetup at uh, Paisley Bear Wine Club. So Andre, the founder, um, is he started this wine club, which is like they go out and find bespoke small wineries and they like hand curate uh, a selection of wines for the month. And you sign up for for um, the membership and you get it's a six is it six bottles of red and six, six bottles yeah. of white. Yeah. Yeah. So you get 12 bottles, like one of each, uh, or six of each, um, sent you every month. And it's from like, these tiny little bespoke wineries. Um, and that's just such a cool concept that they that they have. And then to go in there every month, you have your beat up there um, to now be in the space that Andre's curated and he's giving you a spiel about the wines that he's, that he's like hand selected. Um, incidentally, that he started out of bootlegging wine during, uh, allegedly <laughs> bootlegging wine during lockdown, but like he's got a business out of it now. Like it's, it's, it's very cool what they've done there. And that's yeah. just, you know, it's just one of the, one of the, the things that are happening. So, yeah, it's very, very cool um, to see what you guys are doing. And I think adding the Bitcoin layer on top is you, you guys might be surprised by what you see coming out of the Bitcoin community. Um, it's a group of people that, that might really take a shining to what you're doing. And I think uh, the idea of having this fund for the kids that they can only access once they finish high school and have, and have like, succeeded could, could be really good because if Bitcoin keeps doing what it's doing, you know, um, over a five-year period, there's no one who's lost whose Bitcoin value has dropped over like a five-year rolling period. So these kids could end up with like a decent lump sum of cash sitting there waiting for them. And then if you could incentivize them to further hang on to that and not spend it till they finish university, for example, now you're looking at like a 10-year time horizon. Like yeah. 
this could really be like a big deal for anyone. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's a, it's, it, it's very cool. Yeah. yeah. No, so, we're very excited um, by it. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I'm, yeah, I'm glad I could be a part of that, man. Like it's a, it's, mm. it's my contribution is it's uh, I'm glad I can help. But yeah, no, the, no, no, and I, I yeah. think it's a big part of the success of the organization. So there is that is that you know without the community, this doesn't exist. And so it's not about me. It's not about anyone else in the charity. It's about the the full community of people that that are are getting involved and that are putting their hands up and are saying, you know what, I want to do something good. This is an organization that I want to be a part of. So you know the success of of where we're going, and hopefully we you know we can continue that. It's it's not up to an individual. It's it's up to it's up to the community, and that's very exciting. Yeah. So tell yeah. me, where can people find out more about the charity? If people want to find your websites, uh, social media, how can they track you down? Yeah, cool. So we, you know, and, and I think it's worthwhile just mentioning partners, you know, because, you know, we out did myself and I run a business and, and one other Matt is also Matt. Uh, he also runs a business, so it's very part time. What what I've tried to do is I've tried to look at all the departments within an organization and try and outsource those. So uh, we've currently outsourced our social media. So we're on Instagram at Crew for a Cause. Um, and uh, organization, the, the ad agency Dentsu, they do all of our, some of our social media stuff, so pro bono, so it's really, really exciting that they've kind of come on board. Uh, we're looking at one or two other uh, organizations who are going to hopefully help us build the website. But I think the, the, web, the web address is, is www.crewforacause.co.za. It's a F-O-R, not a four. And, um, and you can go there, and, and, and I think Classy. it's... Yeah, <laughs> we, we, we really try to create a landing page that explains everything and a big part of why, you know, you can sign up, you can donate. Uh, the other thing that I, that I alluded to mention is that we've also partnered with um, fundraising organizations. In, in our case, it's called Give and Gain. Another one that everyone might be familiar with is B B uh, Backer Buddy. And so on our website, you'll see Donate, where you can go through the donation page and you can put your credit card details and, and there's and debit order systems kind of happen. Uh, but there's also a fundraising button. And when you click that fundraising, it goes to the Give and Gay page where we've signed up. And um, if you want to run a marathon and you want to do good and you want to raise funds for us, um, that's a really nice way of, and again, another revenue stream of how people can, can get involved and start fundraising. We recently had someone in the UK uh, wing walk on a red one of those red ball, ball planes in the UK and uh, fundraise through that way. So, you know, it can be anything. It can be if you're doing a hike, if you're doing an event, if you're doing a race of some sort. It's super, super easy and super quick to you know create a thing, and then you distribute that uh, throughout your social media platforms, and hopefully somebody and people kind of sign up and, and sponsor it. So, um, yeah, the, really the, the the main place to go to is the website. Um, also check out our social media. We're getting there. We're posting lots of things. We post uh, updates on the monthly member meetings and all the different events and, and some of the kids. We, we, we tend, you know, there's a fine line of, of sharing too much about the scholars on, on, on our social media. Um, so, you know, we just manage that um, as carefully as we can. Obviously, we need consent and things like that. So a, a lot of the content that you'll see is about the community and what we're trying to do. Um, and then every now and again, we, 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 we post something on the kids and the success of them. So yeah, social media. Uh, we do have a Facebook page. Uh, we do also have LinkedIn, so you can find us on LinkedIn. Uh, but I would definitely say the website and Instagram are the two best ways. Awesome. I'll put all those links in the description of the video below. Um, as well as the Bitcoin donation page, I'll put the uh, BDC Pay Server link in there. Just for any Bitcoiners listening, it's running through BDC Pay Server with uh, on chain and Lightning. So it's all self custodial. So you guys don't have to worry about the sets going down on an exchange hack or anything, which is great. Um, and all of the funds go straight to crew for a cause. So they're not losing anything to friction. So yeah. Um, and on that, Matthew, thank you so much for your time. This has been great. Yeah. Crew for a cause. Yeah, is a very, thank you. Very okay. cool, cool project. My pleasure. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll see you again soon. Chat soon. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Great. Thanks, Matt. Cool. Take care, man. Cheers.